Well, hello and welcome to the DC Today Thursday edition, day after Fed Day. Apparently, is the best day. Dow rallying 428 points, up one and a quarter percent. The S and P up nearly one and a quarter percent, and the Nasdaq up just a little less than one and a quarter percent. So, very comparable returns across all three market indices. And one of those very rare days where all 11 sectors are in the green. The worst performing sector was real estate, and it was up 0.34%. Healthcare was the leading performing sector, and it was up over 1.5%. You had bonds rallying significantly. The 10-year was down 8 basis points, and it yielded to 372. So you had a big rally in bonds across the curve. Um, oil was up three, almost three and a half percent to back to uh, 70.55. So whether you're talking about equities, bonds, commodities, you pretty much had a risk on day across the board. Why would that happen? Well, I think it's interesting divergence because the Fed funds futures are still pricing a 63 to 67% chance of a rate hike next month. I don't believe it will happen, but I have certainly been wrong about it before, as have many others, and I most certainly don't care if it happens. But um, I wouldn't care to defend the position that it won't. Um, I am sensitive to the fact that I, like anyone, am guilty of confusing what I think ought to be with what I think will. But if someone were to say to me to place a bet uh, with USC's football season success on the line this coming fall, I would be betting that they're done. And and so I am trying to intellectually separate what I think they ought to do, which is be done, from what I think they will do, which is be done. But of course, there is um, a greater chance in the futures market that I'm wrong than otherwise. Why do I say done? I think that the Fed, for all my disagreements with them, I don't think they're dumb. Uh, but of course, you know, smart people make mistakes all the time, including the smart people of the Fed. But there's no question that the two most glaring facts here are known to the Fed, which is that inflation is well under control, and that by being done, um, cut, excuse me, hiking, they still maintain a tightening posture. That just by pausing, just by standing still there is a really significant amount of credit that resets at higher rates. And so it has the effect of being ongoing or perpetual tightening for a time, even as they're not actively hiking rates. The Fed knows this. The Fed knows the inflation numbers have moved where they want to go, that the PPI number is back to pre-COVID levels. The CPI number is uh, more than half reduced. And if you were to accurately portray the shelter number is itself in a two-handle inflation, Fed knows this. And I think as you get closer to what will really count as election season, I think there's political ramifications at varying degrees of relevance. I'm not going to get into all of it. I don't, it's not conspiratorial. It's not corruption. It's just reality. Okay. I don't, I don't believe that it's um, popular for them to be breaking something uh, as we go into what counts of an election season. And I am skeptical that they will. And yet, uh, that's what I think seems to have been the policy this far. And where would you say things are broken, David? It would be obviously in a freeze up of available commercial credit. So I would be sensitive to that. Um, that commercial credit will still be tightening even if they stop raising rates. And that could end up becoming recessionary. It could not. It could be a very mild recessionary. We don't know. Uh, There were some data points today. Industrial production was down 0.2%. Not by a lot. And most of the downside, I think about 2% to the downside was utilities output, which is very weather volatile. And so that point two, maybe the market shrugged off, but you also had weekly jobless claims up to 262,000 for the second week in a row. One week doesn't a trend make, two starts to raise eyebrows, three weeks, four weeks, you're talking about a trend. And then all of a sudden that starts looking like the employment story is worsening to some degree. So that, that data point, um, the, the more benign inflation, both in CPI and PPI, and then the, uh, the, the realities I'm talking about commercial credit. I just think 
that they're headed to. They're posturing about still looking at next month, but it's six weeks away. Gives them plenty of time uh, to change the narrative and use the forward guidance, which these days means talking to a reporter at the Wall Street Journal uh, in advance of that meeting. So that's my take. Uh, in Ask David today in the DC Today, there is a question about China suffering a deflationary burst and looking to export their deflation or lower price goods to the rest of the world. Do I think it's happening? What do I think it means? Read the dctoday.com for my answer to that very thoughtful question. And uh, enjoy your evening. So one day, rally day, uh, you're not supposed to be upset when one day is a sell-off, and you're certainly not supposed to be upset when one day is a rally. But I'm here to talk about it, explain it, give our perspective. And tomorrow I'm going to do more of that in the Dividend Cafe as I talk about housing and what has gone on in the culture with housing prices that I think will be worth your read. So Dividend Cafe coming to you tomorrow. Monday is a market holiday, bank holiday, so there will be no DC today uh, behind that uh, closure on Monday. And in the meantime, thank you for reading, watching, and listening to the DC Today. Mm -hmm.